Right, well, I haven't done one of these for a while, but I'm on the allotment plot. First time in quite a while, actually. Sometimes life has a funny way of sort of changing your plans. But there are things going on down here. You see, just over there, there's some um, red chard. So some normal white chard there. And uh, that orange flowers a courgette. We've had quite a few courgettes, but the squashes, generally speaking, aren't doing as well as they usually do. These are our Bellotti beans. It's just starting to get there. Some of the pods are starting to dry up, so we'll harvest those soon. All the ones that are ready, anyway. But today's job has mainly been this, which is digging up the spuds. There are some, I can see, just there, which have, uh, obviously the soil's come off them, but we'll go through them and see what's what. The other thing I've done as well is, because I hadn't been down here for a while, underneath all the uh, apple trees were loads of nettles and stuff. So I've removed all those, ready for when we pick apples. Um, and looking at the ground, there's a fair few windfalls, but we have got a lot on the trees, especially this one. This one seems to have done much better this year. Quite a lot of apples on it, as you can see. So uh, they're small, but these ones we generally use for pressing for juice or cutting up and cooking with, because the uh, skins, it's like a, a russet type of apple and the skins are quite rough. They're all right if you peel them, if you like a nice sort of hard skinned apple, then they're great, but if you don't, then peel them. Um, what else we got down here? Parsnips. <coughs> you might remember that we sowed or let them self seed, which these are doing, as you can see. Look, they've got seeds on them already. And we've had much more success letting them self seed, or sort of helping them a little bit, than we have buying, buying seed and sowing it. And this seed is obviously nice and fresh, so if, as we pull these parsnips up, we'll probably just sprinkle them, or I might sprinkle them over there where there's some bare earth, and we'll go from there. The ones that end of the plot, which you can't really see because it's a bit sort of weedy, didn't do so well. In fact, everything that we've grown down this side of the plot this year has not done well, which is peculiar, really. So, obviously next year we'll rotate them anyway, but I do know things like beans and potatoes and what have you will grow well down that side, so the plan for next year is that's where all the beans and whatnot will go. Um, where we've had onions and stuff around here which we've already dug up and they're at home drying and getting ready for pickling and what have you this is where all the squashes will go so the potatoes will get dug up the soil will, will get left in a state where i can just come down sort of may time next year and plant whatever squashes we've got and we'll let them run this way down the center of the plot and we'll probably put things maybe like the bolotis and that over that side um, and I will get round to moving the trees, which you can see just there. Those are dams and trees. <coughs> I think we've established that now. Those will get moved over the winter, early spring, to that side of the plot. Um, one, because, well, they'll do better over there and they'll help sh shade bits of the plot that I want them to, but also they're at the moment, they're kind of um, shading the neighbour's plot and obviously we don't want that. I will clip them as well, give them a bit of a prune, make them more productive, because they haven't had many um, little fruits on them this year. But we've got some stuff going, there's cabbages and kale, and <coughs> kale in there is alright, not too bad. Sprouts are actually doing quite well for a change. We do struggle with some of the brassicas down here, because they just get eaten by birds and slugs. Um, if anybody's been gardening this year, you may have noticed that slugs have been a bit of an issue. I don't quite know why. We've had hundreds of them in the garden at home. They've been eating dahlias and, well, anything they can get their little mouths on. But yeah, so I'm going to carry on, harvest the spuds, and we'll see where we get. This row here, I'll leave until last because this was the, the potatoes that we saved. So they're all the little leftover ones that we didn't really know what to do with. So we'll, I'll dig that up last and see what we'll get and see if it's worth saving them again. And that saves obviously money then on buying um, seed potatoes. But anyway, the plot has got a bit away from me this year, despite all the work that I've put into it, but sometimes it happens. 
and now what I'm doing is planning for next year, seeing what things did well and where down here, and um, we'll change that. We'll change what needs to be changed. Uh, you know, things like the rhubarb. That seems to really like it where it is, and that will get left where it is. We've already dug up the broad beans, which were there, but we've left the tops in so the roots can sort of rot down. But yeah, yeah it's not too bad. Actually, I just um, did wonder about this because we've not had good weather either. We've not had um, the sun sort of disappeared a while ago and it hasn't really come back. But this is our poly tunnel where we planted two, two melons, two different types of melons. You can see flowers in that there. Whether they'll actually produce anything, I don't know. Um, I mean, there are some tiny little ones coming on some of them, so we'll see. And then this side, let me stand back, <coughs> as you can see, are our birdhouse gourds, which have kind of gone a bit mad. I mean, you can see, look, there's one of the flowers. They're actually quite nice flowers. But, uh, yeah, so it's gone all over the roof. But there are little... get it to focus on that but there are little fruits in places whether they will actually develop whether there's enough of a growing season left sort of heat wise and sun wise i don't know but we'll see but we know they grow in there so next year the plan will be to to try and um get them started a bit quicker maybe even move the the actual polytunnel out into the open a bit more so it gets more sunlight um, we did used to have it, sort of there. The problem we had there was is that it got kind of too much sunlight, so all day it just got baked. It was like an oven in there, and anything we put in there got roasted. Almost. There's some uh, rose hips up there, which we might, which I'll probably end up picking, to be honest with you, and making rose hip syrup out of. That's another good thing. Well, talking of slugs, but. There's a big one just appeared from nowhere. You can get off here, mate. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll probably pick the rose hips. That's something we pick as well sometimes. We make, as I said, rose hip syrup. Um, that's an old sort of foraging favourite, really, that is. And uh, kind of had a resurgence in the Second World War as well when people were, you know, having to sort of make do and mend. Um, you might have seen the other video that I put on not so long ago about us picking elderberries, which is something we do pretty much every year. Um, I am working towards getting elders to grow in our garden so that uh, we don't have to go out foraging. But that's proven a little difficult, which is a surprise because elder generally grows pretty much everywhere. But there you go. Anyway, that's enough of me waffling on. I'm going to start digging up these spuds now. All right, let's see how we get on. All right, there we are. Dug all the spuds up. Here's the result. It's not too bad, I don't think, to be honest. Um, this little pile here, actually, surprisingly, there's some respectable spuds in there, if not a little bit sort of odd-shaped. But there, uh, this little pile here is all one row of spuds. And that was all the row that we put in from, you know, like all the little ones, kind of, like these ones, maybe, that you end up left with, you know, and smaller, that we had in the bottom of a, at the basket where we keep our spuds in. And there's some in this bag as well. But, so, that bag's got quite a few in. So I've got quite a few spuds. But like I said, this row is the, the experimental row, if you want to call it that. Did all right, I think, actually. It's quite a lot of spuds out of that one row, uh, if I'm honest. We've had more spuds out of that one experimental row than I got out of a, a couple of the ones that I dug up out of here. And there's a mixture of red and whites because that's what we had left over. So, yeah. I mean, you can, in theory, just plant whatever little spuds you've got left over. I think the thing there, though, is that um, you're potentially bringing in pests and diseases because all the seed spuds are grown to be resistant to this that and the other like blight and stuff like that but yeah so it is something that you could try i'm quite impressed really but anyway that's me for today there is still like i said plenty of work to be done down here
but most of it now is looking at what we're going to do next year and uh, how we're going to change things, move things about and see where we go and see how things perform and hopefully from a, a sort of work per perspective I may have more time or at least I'll be able to manage my time a bit better but, uh, there's things like the weed control we've got to sort out but that's going to be put up here I won't dig up any parsnips today because we've already got a load of home that we dug up the other day they did quite well they're a little bit shall we say irregular uh, maybe I'll put a picture of them on yeah so they're not all the perfectly straight white parsnips that you see in the supermarket but yeah done all right really as I said we've already harvested a lot of things so we had um, French beans down here you can still see some of the plants there might be the odd bean left on there but we've already harvested them and we've um, we've frozen what we didn't eat so we chopped them up blanched them frozen same with the broad beans um, the bolotis we dry those you can see on the guy over here the pods are some of them are quite you can almost hear them rattling in there so a lot of these are ready so to give you an idea this one that one's almost ready that one's almost there and these ones and then as you go up further up the plants are sort of there they're not quite so ripe but we'll pick them in stages and we dry them all and to dry them we just basically put them in a tub so we pod them shell them whatever you want to call it put them in the tub and leave them and you can tell they're drying out because if you put them all in a tub once you pick them weigh the tub and maybe make a note of how many grams or kilos or whatever you've got and then give it a week weigh it again and you'll see that they will have the weight will have come down slightly and that's the moisture evaporating into the air so yeah some successes this year i mean there's some tomatoes in there which i need to deal with all our tomatoes this year even the ones we grow, grew at home got blight which was quite annoying but it happens there's not much we can do about it really and as i said our squashes have not done nearly as well as i had hoped that in part i think is down to the weather because we had some really nice days nice and sunny and we were watering and then we just had rain and sort of gloomy days like we've got today we are sort of down or due for more sun but i've said that before and we never actually got any a nice courgette flower there look. that's a nice one we've already had quite a few courgettes always a good thing to grow dependable you get courgettes no matter what really we've got some other things coming in here we've got a little uh that one's a bitchy curry by the looks of it a pat patty moran we've got some other bits and pieces a bit hard to see because it's a bit messy my broad bean experiment, well, it wasn't as successful as I'd hoped. Now, I've got one plant there, and there's one plant just in there, and they've got flowers on, and I suspect they will produce beans. I had hoped this would all be full of beans, but it's not. It's full of this stuff, mainly, which is fat hen. I've mentioned it before, but you can actually eat that, so, yeah, you know, it's not completely a problem. You could just eat it. Uh, I think the cabbages are starting to form heads, but I need to get in there and check for caterpillars by the looks of things. Uh, black magic beans, run a bean type thing up there. I can see a few beans that have been eaten halfway up the, the canes. I don't quite know what's done that, maybe a slug or a snail, but we've already picked a load of these as well, and the best thing to do is pick them young, and then you, you avoid the stringy thing that you get with them um, runner beans. But yeah, we'll, um, we'll pick some more of those, eat some, free some. So we will have quite a good stash of stuff in the freezer in a couple of months' time, which we'll use in stews and what have you over the, the winter. So there's positives to take away from this year's growing and, and some not so positive, but yeah, swings and roundabouts, that happens. Lastly, I was hoping I could show you this. We spotted it last time we came down here. I don't know if you can make out this here. This zigzaggy thing here. Well, that's the remnants of a wasp spider nest, or web even. So we've never seen wasp spiders on the allotment before. 
So we were quite excited about that, and I had hoped she would still be here. But I can't see her, so she's either done what she needed to, or unfortunately been eaten by a, a bird or something like that. Most likely a bird. They're about the only thing that eats spiders, I think. Although some rodents have been known to. But I had hoped to show you that, so what I'll do is I will I'll put a picture on. And uh, you can see what a wasp spider looks like and something to look out for on your allotment plot. So, yeah, look out for the picture of a wasp spider. And uh, that's me done for the day now. Might pick some child, take that home, we'll have that for tea tonight. All right then. Okay, time to bag up my spuds. I'm just going to chuck them in this Hessian bag. It's actually a... Not technically a bag, I guess. It's one for putting sand in, for making sandbags. But, yeah, I find they're quite good for spuds and other veg. So I'm going to pack that lot away, chuck it on my push bike, go home. And uh, that'll be it. I think probably next time we come down here we'll be picking apples and probably digging up some more parsnips. All right, then. Thanks for watching.